you guys, thank you for joining me on a new episode of Food and a Single Guy. I am still your very own Amaru, and on this episode of Food and a Single Guy, you guys, I'm gonna cook something that is so traditional to my country, and it's called Bachao Moksa Lacy. Now, let me pronounce that a little slower so you can hear the correct pronunciation. Bachao Moksi Alesi. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a translation here because Bakchao means bakalao, which is basically salted fish. Moksi means to mix, to mingle, to put together, and it comes from the English word to mix. And alesi means rice, and it comes from the Spanish word arroz, which means rice in Spanish. Now, this one pot dish, like I said, is a very traditional dish from my country, and its origins can be traced back to the days of slavery. Given the fact that slaves had to make do with whatever foods were available to them back in the day, they basically threw everything together, which is basically what this dish is. A blend or a mix of all kinds of ingredients and spices, hence the name Moxi Alesi, which basically means mixed rice. Now in some Caribbean countries they call this cook-up rice. Look it up on YouTube, there are a lot of recipes similar to mine. Mind you, there are a lot of varieties on this dish, and the one that I'm gonna be cooking today is one of the more festive ones. And even though one can cook moksa lazy every day, this is one of the more festive ones, like I said, and I'm gonna be cooking this for my mother in honor of her birthday. So basically what we're gonna do here, we're gonna look back on the past and celebrate the present. Now, before I start cooking, I wanna remind you that I posted all the ingredients in the video description box below this video. Okay, let's get to it. The first thing you need to do is heat about four tablespoons of coconut oil in a large pan such as this one. And with coconut oil, you guys, you have to make sure that the oil is piping hot in order for the flavors to be released. Then turn down the heat to medium and saute your chopped onion or shallots and the garlic until they're golden brown. Then add the tomato paste and stir fry for about a minute. After that, add the chopped tomato and stir fry for about another minute before adding the salted fish. Now, before you use the fish, you'll have to soak it into water or hot water for about a couple of hours to get rid of the excess salt. Then rinse thoroughly. With certain brands of bacalao, you'll have to boil the fish in water to make sure that you get rid of all the excess salt as well as tenderizing the fish. And after that, you pull the fish apart into little chunky flakes like this. When all of that is done, you add your fish flakes to the pan and stir fry until the fish is completely coated. Then add the coconut milk and let simmer for about 10 minutes with an occasional stir. Next, you will add your rice. In order to get perfectly cooked rice every time for any amount of rice, you will add about this much water. Now mind you, I have big hands, but about an inch and a half of water is sufficient. And yes, you can cook this dish in your rice cooker but don't use one of those microwave rice cookers because it's going to get damaged. Anyway, back to the recipe. For this dish though, you will use a little bit more water because the fish will soak up all of the fluids. So basically that means a little more than an inch and a half. Now add the rice with the water to the pan and give it a good stir. Allow the rice to cook until the water is almost evaporated. Then add the white eggplant in the middle like so. Turn down the heat completely and allow the rice to cook further. After 10 minutes, you decorate the rice with these fresh okra, like so. And don't forget to add the scotch bonnet pepper, which will give your rice a tremendous flavor. Don't puncture it because it's going to kill you. Now when it's all done, it should look a little something like this. And doesn't that look beautiful? Garnish with some fried plantains, some pickled cucumber, some hot sauce, some pickled limes, or possibly a little piece of that scotch bonnet pepper. Yummy! Now you may have noticed that I haven't used any salt whatsoever in this dish. That is because the fish, the coconut oil, and the coconut milk contain plenty of salt for this dish. But if you need more salt, feel free to add a little bit, or possibly a chicken stock cube or two. Now, some people add salted beef to this dish, or sometimes even smoked chicken or smoked ham. I decided to keep it as traditional as I possibly could. Anyways, you guys, if you decide to try this dish, let me know how it turned out. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and hopefully you'll join me again on a new episode of Food and the Single Guy. Have a good one.